Close your eyes and focus on the breath and stay with the breath. It's your staying power that makes a difference. We gain help from the Buddha in terms of his teachings. <clears throat> but it says, as he said, he's only the one who points out the way. We have to learn how to depend on ourselves to carry through. But we already have some of the qualities that are needed. We simply need to develop them. As he said, he gained his awakening by being heedful, ardent, and resolute. And as he pointed out, the awakening happens to anybody who has those qualities. So we have the right to develop them within ourselves. Heedful, we realize that the actions we do will make a difference, and they really make a big difference. So we have to be very careful about what we do. Ardent is trying to do our best, and resolute is sticking with it all through the ups and the downs. This is where a lot of us fall by the wayside. Things go well for a while, and then not so well. When they're not going well, you start coming down on yourself, or coming down on the teachings. You have to realize it's a quality of sticking with it is going to make the difference. And sticking with it means sticking with it when things are not going well. You have to learn how to talk to yourself, to give yourself energy, to give yourself encouragement. Remind yourself when things have a downturn, they can also have an upturn. Then you're going to watch to see what the mind does to make things difficult for itself and how it doesn't have to. After all, that's what the Four Noble Truths are all about. We're suffering because of our own actions. But we can change our actions. This is where we look. And if it takes a long time to figure this out, okay, we'll do our best to keep up the energy, keep up our conviction. And that's how we see our way through. The Buddha points out the way. We're the ones who have to follow the way. Unfortunately, it's a good path to follow. The Buddha is never asking you to do anything that would be dishonorable. In fact, he raises your standards of what is honorable. And so it's a good path to be on, even on the down slopes. It's better than being off in the woods, lost without a path at all. To remind yourself, as long as you're mindful, as long as you try your best, that's how the path gets mastered. And mindfulness is there to remind you what the Buddha taught, what you've learned from the past, and also about what you can forget. You think about the times when it was really good and that it's not so good anymore. Well, unless you can figure out the difference between why it was there that way then and why you're here now, this way now. If you can't see the difference, can't figure it out, okay, let go of the past. Focus on what you're doing right now. And even if it means going back and taking steps you took before, well, you're going to really learn them well. Because a lot of the practice is just that. It's like our walking meditation path. You have to walk back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And in doing that, you get to see things on the path, by the side of the path, that you wouldn't have noticed otherwise if you just walked through once. So at the very least, you're getting to know your mind. And it's through getting to know your mind that you can begin to gain some control over it. So even though the mind isn't the mind you want it to be right now, remember, by exercising, you make it strong. It's just like taking your body down to the gym. You don't have to wait until your body is strong and then go down to the gym to show off. You take your weak body down. Now, they may sneer at you because you're weak, but that doesn't matter. Just as long as you don't, you don't sneer at yourself. And after a while, you get strong. So be resolute in the path. Stick with it. And that's how it will show its rewards. <clears throat>